Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Illinois enacts new legislation that brings an end to cash bail. Advocates say the new system isn't perfect, but it's better than what we previously had. Rockford police still haven't found the person responsible for a hit and run crash last week. You could help track down the driver who sent a bicyclist to the hospital. The city of Rockford may change its drinking laws to support a social district downtown. The proposal has many of the area's business owners excited. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Local legislators and community leaders come together to mark the end of cash bail in Illinois. Organizers held a news conference outside the Winnebago County Justice Center today. It was to mark when the Pretrial Fairness Act goes into effect. The legislation ends cash bail for low-level misdemeanors. A local faith leader says he's pleased by the efforts many organizations made to pass the act. I'm very proud of the fact that the Illinois Supreme Court, the state legislature, the various uh, law enforcement uh, entities as well as domestic violence agencies or those who are um, advocates for the survivors of domestic violence, how all of them came to the table over a series of years and really crafted things. And is it perfect? Of course not, but it's better than what we had. Volunteers also observed courtroom proceedings to make sure the act is being properly implemented. Illinois is the first state to eliminate cash bail. Rockford police arrest a man after an attempted bank robbery. Last Tuesday, officers were called to the Rockford Municipal Employee Credit Union for reports of a bank robbery. Police say Dion Dixon gave the teller a note demanding money. He left after his demands were not met and went into the Associated Bank nearby. He was taken into custody and lodged in the county jail. Rockford police hope re-releasing a car's description helps find the driver who put a bicyclist in the hospital. Friday morning, officers were called to East State Street near OSF St. Anthony Medical Center for a crash between a car and a bike. Police say the car, an older tan Toyota Camry, hit the cyclist and took off. The 61-year-old man on the bike is in critical condition at the hospital. Another traffic crash over the weekend seriously injures a senior citizen. Rockford officers responded to Mulford Road and Carriage Green Way for a two-vehicle crash. An 81-year-old woman was driving a car, turned onto Mulford when another car with a 19-year-old young man behind the wheel hit her. The woman was ejected from her car. She was taken to a hospital with serious injuries. She's in stable condition. The teenager was also transported, treated, and released. A verbal argument between teenagers turns violent. Rockford police were called to Charles Street for reports of two teens fighting. Officers say a 15-year-old stabbed a 16-year-old multiple times. The 16-year-old was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No charges have been pressed at this time. A Rockford teen's arrested after running from police last Thursday. Officers observed a teenager wearing a black ski mask on Broadway. When the teen saw police, he ran off. He was taken into custody after a brief chase. Officers found a loaded handgun in his waistband. He's charged with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon, a probation violation, and resisting arrest. Police call on the public to help identify a Rockford burglary suspect. Over the past few weeks, several reports of burglaries and suspicious incidents have been reported on the west side. Doorbell cameras recorded images of who investigators call a person of interest. Rockford police ask anyone with information on who this man is or where he might be to contact the department. Construction is set to start on a busy Rockford street. Broadway is undergoing a project to narrow the roadway. The plan's designed to increase awareness, reduce speeding, and provide a safer experience for pedestrians. Construction started today while work is also being performed on nearby Charles Street. Charles is set to reopen October 9th. That means for two weeks, drivers can expect major delays in travel around the area. The city of Rockford encourages people to use the East State Street detour until Charles is reopened. Sales tax in Freeport could go up by 1%. Council members plan to vote tonight on the proposal. The city says raising the tax would bring in an estimated $3.5 million in revenue every year. That money would be used on various road projects. Native Americans applaud a move by Illinois to return ancestral remains and materials to their places of origin. Governor J.B. Pritzker signed a bill that streamlines the process. Illinois' Department of Natural Resources would consult with affiliated tribal nations when returning remains. 
The bill also approves the construction of a cemetery on the grounds of the Illinois State Museum. It will be used for the reburial of ancestral human remains the museum has. Tribal nations want to be able to rebury their ancestors in Illinois where they lived and not necessarily take them to where the tribes have been removed to now, whether that's Oklahoma or Kansas um, or Michigan. It's kind of a, a little bit of an apology, I feel like. You know, they're trying to, they're, they're trying to make things right. The Illinois State Museum holds the second largest collection of indigenous human remains and funeral related artifacts in the country. But in its history, the museum has repatriated only about 2% of those remains. A change may be coming to Rockford's drinking laws. Aldermen are set to consider a plan that would establish a downtown social district. Andrea Baroni spoke with a business owner who'd be affected. Andrea, he's supporting this? That's right, Eric and Mimi. Business owners I talk to are excited by the proposed social district. Akash Patel owns Cantina Taco in Stewart Square. He told me this new amendment could positively change the culture of downtown Rockford. But that, I think, would help downtown tremendously as far as there's a lot of workers here and the first thing they do is shoot straight out to go home. Um, whereas if you had more of a social district, I think that would maybe entice them to stay, drink, eat, maybe hang out and then go home. To-go cups could soon become a common occurrence in downtown Rockford. A social district proposal would allow people to leave a bar or restaurant with their alcoholic drink. Businesses within the River District would be able to opt in or out. There are rules about when and where people can walk with the drinks, and drinks can only be approved in glasses. Akash Patel is hopeful if this passes, it would draw in more customers to the downtown area, specifically for dinner time. My dinner crowd here is um, sporadic. It depends on concerts, events, stuff like that. Um, and my lunch obviously is very busy because of city workers. So if I can balance that out, that'd be great. No, I hope they do it right and provide uh, a good place for people, safe place for people to uh, enjoy themselves. Right now, the social district is connected to another proposal that would allow alcohol at hookah lounges. It was tabled at the last city council meeting to allow aldermen more time to look into it. The topic is set to be discussed again to clear up the language at tonight's city council meeting. United Auto Workers strike enters day four. Thousands of workers walked off the job at three assembly plants Friday after the contract expired. Today, talks are set to continue with one of the big three automakers. Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson has more. Top Democrats rallied behind striking auto workers in Michigan over the weekend. If you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to provide a comfortable living for yourself, for your family. Pennsylvania Democratic Senator John Fetterman says he drove five hours from his home to walk the picket line. Do what's right for the union you know, in this nation. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders says the workers deserve a living wage. Over the last several decades have fallen further and further behind. About 12,000 UAW workers are striking against the three major U.S. automakers after all sides failed to reach a deal for a new labor contract. The union is seeking at least a 36% raise, job protections, and the undoing of concessions made during the Great Recession. Currently, automakers are offering raises of about 20%. Although Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance supports the union's push for better pay, he says it's the Biden administration's push to transition to electric vehicles that's really working against them. Every time you force somebody to buy an EV instead of a gas-powered car, you are going to put an Ohio auto worker out of a job. That is just the economic reality. If there's no deal soon, labor leaders say we could see more strikes across the country. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. It is nice to see the return of sunshine this afternoon. After a bit of a foggy start, we take a look over the Rock River, looking to the north and northeast. A beautiful picture here over downtown Rockford on our Supply Corps camera. Before long, we'll start to see more of that fall foliage begin to really start to bloom. However, colors might not be quite as vibrant uh, here with the recent dry spell that we've had over the last couple of months. So that is something to kind of keep in mind as we'll start to see those leaves and colors begin to change 
change within the next month, which means it is time for your fall photos. Some of those leaves already beginning to change across the area. Would love to see those pictures, maybe in your front yard, backyard, you've got some fall decorations or just enjoying some time at some of the apple orchard or pumpkin patches. Weather at WTVO.com is where you can share those pictures. It's a beautiful day and a beautiful evening to get out and about. 73 right now in Freeport. We're 75 in Rockford. Winds have been a little breezy from time to time, kind of from the north and south, so a variable wind as high pressure remains in control. And that high pressure system will continue to help our skies clear out this evening before cloud cover works back in later tonight. So clearing out tonight, we'll see cloud cover work back in right around midnight. And this is with an area of low pressure and a warm front to the west of us. We're already starting to see those rain, uh, rain showers begin to develop to the north, but also cloud cover slowly work in and increase across parts of Iowa. That will bring us our chance for rainfall early tomorrow morning. So rain will return for that morning commute. Some heavier downpours and even some isolated thunderstorms are possible, but not looking at any widespread thunderstorm activity as the instability is pretty low. After a bit of a break, going into tomorrow afternoon. We'll see a few more showers begin to return by tomorrow evening. So we are dry for much of tonight, right around 2, 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. We may start to see a couple of light showers move in, but I think we'll really start to see that rain build in from the west and southwest at about 4, 5, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. You can see that on future cast too. Temperatures are down into the 50s tonight, so not quite as cool as what we woke up to this morning. Here come those showers working in. This is 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. As we go through Sunday, Sunrise, we'll see a couple pockets of some heavier downpours, and that could bring totals up a little through tomorrow morning. Steady rain will continue through about 9 o'clock, and then it becomes more scattered as we get closer to noon and early afternoon, right around 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Some breaks in the activity tomorrow, but then we see another slug of moisture move in. This is with the actual warm front coming through. Futurecast gives us a few showers on Wednesday. I think if anything, we'll see more cloud cover uh, as we have more moisture kind of work in for the afternoon and staying mostly dry for our Wednesday. As far as rainfall totals are concerned, I don't want you to focus so much on the actual city and the amount, but where we get those heavier downpours, that's where we could see those totals three quarters of an inch, maybe a little more than that in some locations, but that's not expected to be the widespread event, but there will be some higher totals, generally around a quarter of an inch to a half an inch is what we can expect. 55 degrees for tonight, you've got some clearing taking place this evening, clouds will move in late. Does get a little windy though for tomorrow. Winds will be gusting in from the southeast at around 25 miles per hour as temperatures make it up to 72. Rain showers in the morning and then again into the evening. We'll keep that cloud cover around on Wednesday. Notice temperatures then climbing Thursday, Friday. We're near 80. We should stay mostly dry and then the next chance for rain will come in as we get closer into next weekend. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. There is plenty of blame to go around for the Bears' own two start to this NFL season. It begins with the coaches who didn't have the Bears ready to go in week one, and the play calling has been un unacceptable for the most part. Like the screen pass toward the end of the game yesterday that the Buccaneers turn into a pick six. Throwing a pass into the middle of a crowd from your own end zone is never a good idea. The Bears' other issues so far include the offensive line giving up ten sacks in two games. The defense has only one sack. The Bears are losing the turnover battle 4-0. Running the ball was the one thing the Bears did well last season. Yesterday, they rushed for only 67 yards. The tight ends are being ignored for some reason, and Chase Claypool's negatives far outweigh his positives. The Bears have a lot to work on before taking on the Chiefs this Sunday. Obviously, we don't want to be 0-2. Being, if we're 2-0, we're not really talking about like what works, and we're probably still trying to figure out what works, but we're still trying to figure those things out. So. We are steadfast, we are straightforward, and we are all in this together. So it's coaches, players, and we are looking at a great Wednesday practice and then looking into Kansas City. That's what we're looking at. Yep. For the Packers, the defense was the biggest disappointment yesterday in Atlanta. On a day when the Packers were without their two biggest offensive weapons, Aaron Jones and Christian Watson, and they lost two key offensive linemen, well, the defense really needed to step it up. Instead, the defense allowed 446 yards of offense to the Falcons. They allowed 211 yards rushing. This group with eight first-round draft picks on defense still is not achieving like it should. What week is this? Is week two? 
okay, we got so much football to be played. You know, at the end of the day, we just got to be critical of ourselves. You feel me? All, on, all three phases and come back next week home and show out. That's it. If we want to be really good, as good as we want to be, then we, we can't let teams go by that we should be. Well, the Chiefs were not comfortable with all these NFL quarterbacks getting bigger contracts than Patrick Mahomes has, so they have reworked his deal. Over the next four years, he'll be paid more than $210 million. That'll make him the highest-paid quarterback in the league again over that stretch, and it's guaranteed money. Hey, we have Monday Night Football action coming away again tonight here on WTVO. The Browns take on the Steelers. The pregame coverage will begin at 7 o'clock. Kickoff is at 7.15. The Cubs are off tonight, the Brewers play in St. Louis, and the White Sox are facing the Nationals. It was nice we finally got in a little bit of rain over the weekend. Yeah, some areas picked up one, two inches of rainfall with some of those heavier downpours late uh, Saturday night. Sunday, we had a couple of showers kind of linger through. This afternoon was pretty nice. We've got another round of some rain moving in tomorrow morning as well. Won't be quite as heavy as what it was Saturday night, but there are going to be some heavier downpours. First warn interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. That's where you want to follow for the rain activity going into tomorrow because it may have a little bit of an impact on the morning commute, just kind of slowing you down a bit uh, with the rain showers coming through. They'll taper off mid to late morning, kind of linger through about 1, 2 o'clock, and then we've got a few additional showers by tomorrow evening. Temperature is down to 55 tonight, 72 on Tuesday, close to 80 on Wednesday, 80 Thursday, Friday. All right, thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.